I'm Tom Baker, this is Chasing Cars, and this is the Lamborghini Urus. Is it the best SUV in the world? We're gonna find out. The Lamborghini Urus is the SUV that you buy if you love the Lamborghini brand and you want an SUV that is as close as you'll get to a supercar at this point in time. Obviously, this thing is styled to evoke the same kind of image as Lamborghini's famous supercars, but it is a large SUV. It sits on the same platform as vehicles like the Audi Q8, the Bentley Bentayga, and even the Volkswagen Touareg, but obviously Lamborghini have had much more than just a play with the chassis that sits beneath the Urus. This is a super SUV, the brand calls it. We'll be putting that claim to the test in today's video, but, we'll also be seeing what the Urus is like to live with because the whole point of buying a supercar in the shape of a large SUV is that this needs to be able to go to the grocery store. It needs to be able to do the school pickup. That's all important and I'll be trialing those things today as well. But as usual, we'll start inside the Lamborghini Urus and see exactly what you get for your money. $390,000 worth, but this one is optioned up to half a million bucks. So what does that buy you? We'll find out shortly. But first, make sure to hit subscribe down below if you haven't already done so. As the not so subtle number plates on this Urus suggest, underneath the bonnet is a now familiar four liter twin turbo V8 engine. And this engine has been deployed across a range of premium Volkswagen Group vehicles that includes the Urus. We've also seen it recently in the Audi RS6 and the Audi RS Q8. And in fact, the latter car shares many components with this vehicle, including its 48 volt mild hybrid system. That's right, the Urus is a hybrid, although it isn't really directed at saving fuel. Instead, the 48 volt system powers things like the active anti-roll bars in this car that give it superior handling and it makes the air suspension even faster. But at the heart of the vehicle is the V8 combustion engine, producing 478 kilowatts of power and 850 newton meters of torque, headed through an eight-speed torque converter automatic gearbox to a full drive system. As we'll see shortly, this thing works to killer effect. It's quite an attractive engine bay, even if all of the gubbins are covered up by this cosmetic cover here. The engine is individually numbered though, which is always a nice touch. When you're spending half a million dollars on a super SUV, you expect the interior to be among the best of any crossover on the market. And that is what the Lamborghini Urus delivers. Not just because the interior is theatrical and dramatic in the way it's been designed, but also because everything actually just works. When you think of an Italian supercar, you don't often think of great ergonomics, uh, reliability, build quality being that good. And yet in the Urus, probably thanks to its substantial number of platform sharing cars that are also very good, this interior is really well made and laid out very logically. In fact, it's extremely easy to live with. It makes this car just so relaxing to drive, even when you're not really going out to drive fast. It just works really nicely. Partially, that's because the screens, the technology, the software is provided by Audi. Now, Audi is the technology leader of the Volkswagen group internally, and that's a good thing because they make really good software. So the stuff in the Urus works. But Lamborghini do a much better job at integrating the screens, in my opinion, particularly this upper screen here where you have your nav, you have uh, your multimedia. It's inset into the dash, which keeps the reflections off it, and it just looks more tightly integrated to me. Similarly, the lower screen where you've got your climate controls and where you write uh, your destination for the navigation, for example, it's gorgeous and flush here in this carbon fiber trim. Similarly, ahead of the driver, we've got digital gauges that's basically Lamborghini's version of the Audi virtual cockpit. That works well, and we do have some unique Lamborghini fonts ahead of the driver. Sadly, the fonts here in the central screens are just the same as in an Audi. I think that would have been an area where there could have been some cool customization. But the rest of the interior is just beautifully screwed together and comfortable. Like the seats are really genuinely comfortable and supportive. They are made out of fine Napa leather, green stitching in this car to match the Verde Mantis paint. Similar patterns here in the steering wheel, which is flat bottomed. We've got the tricolor Italian flag, perforated leather, gorgeous little metal strip at the zero degree mark. No Alcantara on the wheel, which is great. It is on the headliner and in the door cards, but 
there's virtually no other Alcantara in this interior. What there is a lot of is carbon fiber. Obviously, it's not weight saving, but it does suit this car. It looks good. I'd probably go for it. Also down here, we have this whole panel, which is unique to Lamborghini. We've got this complicated gear shifter arrangement. Of course, like any Lambo, drive is selected by pulling a paddle. Everything else is done down here. I love the theater of having to lift this little cockpit panel here in order to start the engine. Then we've got significant range of customization in terms of drive modes, all of which have dramatic Italian names, custom modes, the ability to change your drivetrain steering and damper settings on the fly, which is always very cool. And we have other nice touches like leather everywhere, Lamborghini script ahead of the front passenger, real cold metals used around the cabin, and things like massaging, cooling, and heating in the front seats. But unlike the Audi RS Q8, with which this car shares many components, not everything is standard. In fact, you have to pay a lot for common options that would be standard fit on an Audi, Mercedes, or BMW. So it's probably a good point to go over the actual cost of this car, which starts at 395,000. But you have to pay extra for things like the paint. Obviously that's you know gonna cost more. It's a gorgeous deep green, $17,000. The 23 inch wheels, 10,000. Panoramic roof, almost $5,500. The black styling package outside, $3,700. The electric seats with ventilation and massage, $5,800. The carbon fiber inside, the best part of $10,000. The Bang & Olufsen advanced 3D sound system is nearly $12,000. Uh, Off-road modes with trailer prep, just over a grand. Ambient lighting, almost $6,000 in the interior of the car. And the power tailgate, $1,600. This car has over 100,000 in options. You can get a whole Audi S4 wagon for that uh, much money, bringing the total before drive away costs to $497,803. Certainly not cheap, but it's a Lamborghini. If you're already walking in the door of a Lambo dealership, I don't think you're going there for value for money. In any case, up front, it's truly luxurious. Let's check out the second row. The Urus is the most practical Lamborghini ever made. Not that that's a very high bar. The Diablo and the Countach were not very well known for being easy to get in and out of, but it couldn't be any more different in the Urus, which is actually very spacious in the front and in the back. You can see that for myself at six foot, I've got heaps of room. Headroom, no problem. Another couple of inches. Leg room, generous. Toe room, good, even though that seat is on the deck and you could get someone in the middle. There is a fifth seat belt buckle, even though it is a bit of a perch. We have a flip down armrest. We've got cup holders. We've got air vents. We've got four climate zones in this car. We've got two more 12 volt sockets here in the back as well. Plus, you know, beautiful materials carrying through to the second row. This is truly a family Lamborghini. There's plenty of room in this car. Yeah. It basically gets full marks, apart from the lack of USB ports here in the back. Heading around the back of the Lamborghini Urus, you find arguably this SUV's best angle. I actually, you know what, when I first saw photos of the Urus, I thought, oh my God, what have they done? But in the flesh, I actually think it's a rather good looking car. I'm not sure if Verde Mantis, this special color on the car I've brought along today, is the one I would go for. I actually think the black with silver accents in an Urus tells the story really nicely, but it's an incredibly emotional looking car. Gorgeous Lamborghini script along the back. It doesn't actually say Urus on the car, which is quite interesting, but of course, anybody that's in the know will know. Black accents, you can do silver instead. What you can also do is a power tailgate, but you have to pay for it. This car might be nearly $400,000 before you add options, but you will need to spend $1,600 to grab that feature. But it does open up to reveal a remarkably practical boot. The Urus has a 616 litre cargo space, which means you're gonna be able to get several large suitcases in the back, as I've done. You get several sets of golf clubs, you'll get skis because you can fold down those rear seats. We've also got a gorgeous Alcantara cargo cover or cargo blind with green stitching. The attention to detail in the Urus is really something else. And like other vehicles on this platform with air suspension, there are actually controls here in the boot to lower or raise the rear ride height of the car to make it easier to load. You do also get this chrome finisher here to help you try and protect the paintwork. 
but I think it goes without saying that given this vehicle rolls on 23 inch wheels in order to fit over the brakes, you don't get a spare wheel with this car. You do get controls to close the boot or close it and lock the vehicle, but of course, at this point, it's time to get into the driver's seat of this super SUV and see just what makes the Urus so special to drive. So, the Lamborghini Urus, what's it really like to drive? Well, going into this, I had a couple of you know, varying expectations. The first was the knowledge that the Urus sits at or near the top of the tree that contains a lot of cars we've already driven, everything from the Audi Q5 to the Touareg to the Q7 and Q8, the Porsche Cayenne, Bentley Bentayga. The uh, Urus is in good company, and that would be the Volkswagen Group's MLB platform. That being said, most of the cars on this platform are customized in one way or another, and particularly this one. That's because Lamborghini obviously aren't going to just spit out an SUV that feels like a Volkswagen Touareg to drive. On the contrary, out of all the vehicles on this platform I have driven, the Urus feels the most bespoke, by far. And it's not just the fact that it looks very different outside and also inside, it's everything about the dynamics. There are some common elements and some common phenomena, but the way this vehicle rides and handles is very special, and it doesn't feel like a Porsche or an Audi. You know, it has its own thing going. Obviously, this is a very different vehicle to what Lamborghini normally produce. There was, of course, the LM2 back in the day, Hummer-style military vehicle, but that wasn't really an SUV in the way that we think about them now. Lamborghini's specialty is low-slung, highly compromised supercars, and we're sitting in a large SUV that already in today's video we've figured out is comfortable, refined, sophisticated, and capable of carrying five people in their luggage, so it's quite a departure for the brand. And yet, there's plenty of Lamborghini Qs, not just the engine, which certainly feels up to the job of being a Lambo, but also just the really balanced and interesting and engaging handling that gives you plateaus to discover. You can drive this thing in traffic to the grocery store and it's entirely calm and easy, but as you dial up the anima, the different soul modes of the car, they're not just drive modes, it's the soul of the vehicle, Lamborghini says. The going gets more and more serious and there's higher and higher levels of ability in this car that you can tap into. Now, the road modes do get progressively very stiff in sport and then coarser, but with the ego mode, you're able to customize something that suits Australian B roads to a T. And that is the sportiest engine settings and gearbox settings and all drive and stability control, the loudest exhaust, but the softest suspension and the most comfortable steering. That's a setup that I found works terrifically on the roads I like to test cars on, because even in its softest setting, the Urus is still very, very controlled through the standard fit air suspension, adaptive air suspension. You actually get this beautiful mix of great body control, but really tremendous compliance. This vehicle rides on 23 inch wheels and Pirelli P0 tires, not a combination that anyone would say was designed out of the box for comfort. And yet, the ability of the Urus to soak up imperfections in the road and just carve a track for itself is effectively unparalleled in SUVs. You can tell that is where substantial expense in this expensive car goes into, and that's the development of a suspension package that's able to turn rough Australian tarmac into a circuit that the Urus is able to devour and let you enjoy. A BMW X5M and X6M cannot do that to the same level, nor can a GLE 63 Mercedes, nor can even an Audi RS Q8, despite sharing so many of the components of this car, the Urus just takes it a level higher. And yes, it's very expensive, but in some ways you get what you pay for. Not so much in all of those optional features in the cabin that really should be standard, but in terms of the base package for just a hair under 400,000, this vehicle does define new levels of what we think a family car is capable of. You know, yes, all right, it's a cliche to say it's the Lamborghini of SUVs, 
Maybe it's not. Maybe there's no such thing as a true Lamborghini of SUVs. What this is, is a bloody good SUV in every way. And if the form factor and the shape and the design appeals to you, there's certainly nothing about the driving experience that makes you question whether or not you should do it. Now the same can be said for the engine. 4 litre twin turbo V8, 478 kilowatts of power, 850 newton metres of torque. It's a beast, no doubt about it. It sounds terrific. The best sounding implementation of this engine in the entire group, both outside and inside the car. It's loud and sounds emotional outside, which is not always the case with combustion motors in 2021. Terrific partnership with the 8-speed torque converter auto, which fires off slick and seriously rapid shifts, but without the discomfort of a dual clutch system. And the all-wheel drive is seamless. In ESC Sport, the stability control tune is good too. ESC Fully On is a bit grabby in this car, I will say. As can be the brakes until you get used to how seriously capable they are. Biggest braking package on a production car in the Urus and on a shared with the RSQ8. But in the RSQ8, they're optional. Here in the Urus, the 440 millimeter front discs are standard, 10 piston setup. Also huge brakes, 370 mil in the back, but they look tiny, dwarfed by the 23 inch wheel that houses them. But the Urus pulls up and quick. Even more impressively than its pace off the line, which is frankly staggering, probably because it's also accompanied by an amazing soundtrack. You know, a Tesla Model X is quite a lot faster than this car actually off the line, but it doesn't give you the same thrills, that's for sure. Plus you've got all of the group safety stuff, lane keep assist, adaptive cruise, AEB, a great 360 degree camera with 3D rendering of the car, so you can check that you're not about to curb those 23s. You know, there aren't too many cars that get as close as this to giving you the whole package. It's really something. So those are my detailed thoughts on the 2021 Lamborghini Urus. Absolutely no doubt, this is a very special SUV. And if you're after a crossover that's closely affiliated with the supercars of Italy, then clearly the Urus is the vehicle to buy. Soon enough, it will have competition from Ferrari, which will create a really interesting Italian super SUV landscape here in Australia. For now, the Urus feels sophisticated, well-built, and it must have, if not the best handling of any SUV in the world, it would be right up there. Interestingly though, if you're not tied to the romance of buying a Lamborghini, you can achieve much the same in the Audi RS Q8, with which this vehicle shares many of its components, and yet costs about half the price on the road. But of course, if you're buying a Lamborghini, you probably don't want an Audi. I'm keen to know your thoughts though, so let me know down below in the comments. While you're there, make sure to hit subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, thanks for watching Chasing Cars.